I mean, the biggest position of this conversation is there's things to do that you can do to get work. Like, don't just sit there and do nothing or don't just sit there and wait till you have enough money to do something. Like go out there and do these things and then you can get the money to eventually pay for marketing so you don't have to do those things anymore. What's up, Jared? What's up, dude? <laughs> Nothing, dude. Just chilling. It's uh, the Eternal Podcast Wednesday. The Eternal Podcast Wednesday has started. Yeah, we should start that. That should be the title of the show, The Eternal Podcast <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> the Eternal know? Podcast. Yeah, that's just how it is, you know? And it's going to be forever. Wednesday. Yep. All the time. Yeah. Dude, what's up? How's it going? You're coming to Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm leaving in a couple of days. I uh, got my U-Haul yesterday and loaded up with half my stuff. And By now I just... a trailer that you're yeah. going to pull behind your truck? Yep. Yep. And so loaded it up with all the things we have boxed, which is all the stuff we're going to take. I got guys coming over to my house to help me move my piano tonight. And nice. then after that, it's just like beds and then a bunch of trips to the dump to take all the stuff we didn't sell at the garage sale. Nice. So, cool. It, yeah, we're, we're, we're on pace. Like everything's clicking where it should be. Um, my truck has to go back into the shop, which is frustrating, but is what it is. You know, so and then you're going to drive and you're going to be here in five days, 4000 miles in five days. I know. Just wait. Just wait. Everybody can listen if I'm either full of shit or if we can <laughs> Dude, we can make it happen. To, they don't even need to listen. <laughs> well, <laughs> they or maybe they do. Maybe they maybe they have listened. And so they already know. No, they don't need to what? listen. They already know oh, okay. that it took Joel at least I'm going to say at least seven days. At least seven, dude, you're insane. Seven days? Yep, seven Jeez. days. Okay, that's your mark, seven days? Yeah. Okay. Well. I 100% guarantee it's not going to be five. You don't think so? Dude, I want to, like, we need to make a bet on this. Like, this is something, like, I'm not a betting man, but this is something yeah, me neither. I would, I'd be willing to bet on. <laughs> yeah, you're a betting man like I'm a betting man. When you bet when you're sure of the outcome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so like right now I'm super sure and you're super sure. So it's a good bet. Yeah. But I don't like, I don't like, like, I don't want to take the bet because there's variables. If I didn't have my pets, I would take the bet because my pets are the variable that I can't control. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. they're the ones I can control my dad and I control myself. So let's say if you win, right. Mm -hmm. You get here in five days, mm -hmm. pick a, pick a consequence or something that I have to do. And if I win, <laughs> I'll pick, I'll pick a consequence for you or something you got to do. Okay. Oh, uh, that's scary. That could be anything, so, but let's do it right now. My con, if you don't get here in five days, mm -hmm. then you have to go buy a new mountain bike and go bike riding with me. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. See? But I was going to do that anyway. No, you weren't. Of but, course I was. Okay. Then I get to go pick the bike. I would have gonna have you do that anyway. I don't know what to do for a bike. So it's a fine. It's a fine. It's a consequence. It sucks. I'm super pissed about this. Damn it, Jared. It's perfect. Um, and then so I gotta pick a thing for you. Yeah. Yep. Oh, dude. Um uh, the first thing that came the first thing that came to my head is that if I win, then you have to play bass for me and Costin and Costin's band. Ooh, Costin's gonna have a band? Heck yeah, dude. How do I have to play bass like for a long time? Or no, just, no, 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 no. You just got to do like a show. You got to do a oh, show. Okay. Deal. Yeah. Cool. It's a deal. And, and you can't sit down. You have to stand. <laughs> Does it mean I got to buy a bass? I haven't I had know. a bass in a long time. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe cost well, Actually, I have a bass. I have a bass. Uh, your bass is terrible. I, I'm glad that you remember. I was going to say it's a crappy <laughs> bass, but I have a bass. I was thinking about going and getting a bass. And then I was you like, know. man, I'm never going to play that thing. My wife was like, why doesn't Jared just play in the band? And I was like, I don't think he would. I don't think I he would. What, what kind of band? I don't know. It's Costin's music. It'll be whatever we end up making it. Like, oh, yeah. I'd probably play so. in a band. Yeah. Because to me, fun. like, playing bass is super lame. I mean, it's kind mm -hmm. of fun. Like, getting better at it is fun and mm -hmm. progressing at it. But... And playing in a band isn't even that fun, but it's the camaraderie mm -hmm. of the guys that's fun. That's what yeah. I enjoy. Yeah, like I like that where they're getting together and actually like creating something together. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Yep, I think that's fun too. I think playing shows is fun. Um, I think, yeah, like you said, it's all about who you're with. Like all the shows that I played are really fun because I just get to be with the right group of people and have a good time doing it. Yeah. Um, and it's fun to be good at things. 
like so like when you, liked was shows. what's that shows, like shows. yeah I, I think it depends on like who you're with and how they approach it because some people will approach shows like really this is there's a lot of stress we got to control these things like some people can just get stressed out we yep. were always really good at approaching shows that like one we're very very efficient with everything so we just show yep. up we'd sound check super fast be very pleasant to everybody there because that's yep. really important you know, because yeah. you don't want to piss off your sound guy. Everybody makes that mistake. It's no. like amateur hour. They like make yeah. fun of the sound guy. I'm like, you're an idiot. Like, yeah. you're going to, that guy controls your life right now. Yes. Um, hey, hold on. For everybody listening and everybody watching, me and I played in a band from when I was like 13 till I was like 29 mm -hmm. with pretty much the same guys. Like, yep. it started out, I was the singer guitar player and I started the band, but then it evolved into, I became the <laughs> bass player. So, <somehow>. yeah. <laughs> Somehow they're like, why don't you play this, Jared? I, don't know, I started with bass when I was like eight years old, and then yeah, I just morphed into bass. And then mm -hmm. you played in bands for because you grew up in Colorado. Did you play in a band in Colorado? Yeah, I grew up playing in bands in Colorado. My first band was called the Royal Coachmen. We pretty much just <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Pretty cool, huh? And then and then we changed it to Robo Funk when we got into high school. Cool. Uh, but the funny thing about it is it's the same group of guys, and we played the same set middle school and high school we never learned any new songs we knew like the same eight songs did you play cover like, songs we played a lot of cover songs we had because uh -huh. like the singer he, see here's the thing the singer he was too scared to write his own lyrics because mm -hmm. he wasn't he didn't want to be vulnerable and right. so like nobody wanted to sing we had one gig at like a graduation party where nobody we didn't have a singer at the time of the gig because <laughs> <laughs> nobody wanted to sing so it was i mean i just played the drums right so that's all i did i just played the drums and then yep. in alaska i was in bands and we um toured in alaska which means we drive really far down to anchorage and then we yeah. play as many shows and the thing about alaska is what was your band there young uh, fangs, young fangs. Yep. yep the you thing about good you're really yeah good. we were good i mean i think yeah. that we could have we could have made a run of it if we were all on the same page within the band i mean a band is like a business i think a lot of bands fail because yeah. they don't think of it like a business nope. and they think of it like this is a fun thing that we do and we just like get wasted and play shows which yeah you can do that but i think somebody in your group group is going to be carrying your ass because you're just getting wasted <laughs> yeah. and like being annoying so it's like you have to think of it like a business you got to make money and we just we were really good at the music part and we understood the business aspect of it but we never really jumped into it hardcore like being right. in a band is like an any entrepreneurial endeavor same same amount of risk except yep. for more because it's completely subjective yeah the um, odds are against you quite a bit yeah now if i was to have that same band right now knowing what i know about social media oh dude it'd be to me it's way more there's much more of a system because now yeah. I would just make the same music that we made, which was good music. And then we would just make sure to post a ton on social media. And then eventually we'd develop a following and then we could sell shows through that following. It'd just be way safer. Because yeah. in Alaska, touring means I'd have to play four hour sets to make money. Like four yeah. hours is a long freaking time to play music. And you didn't want to yeah. split the bill because it was like not enough money to do it. So yep. we'd drive down and play like three or four, four hour sets in a weekend and then drive back. And it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, when we get down to Pensacola, I want to start playing music again, thinking about a hobby because it's probably the hobby that I'm f furthest along in. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for me to just continue in that one. Yeah. Um, and it's fun. I like it. Right. So it's yeah. important to also do something that you like. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, that's a little bit about me and Jared's uh, <laughs> band experience. For well, I don't know where we're going here. with that. <laughs> I can't remember either. Well, we were talking about the bet and me moving to Florida, and then, then you would have to play right. bass in the band. Yes. Yep. Um, and then we were talking about the best part of being in a band is yep. the camaraderie. And you like the shows, but I don't. Yeah. Well, again, because the shows were fun because it's um it's fun to work under pressure because mm -hmm. then you can really like be that person who can perform well under pressure. Um, and then it's fun if you're with the right people. I mean, it's much like work, right? Like work can be really fun, even if you're doing crappy things, if you're with the right people. Yep. Um, and I mean, yeah, so I was just with good people. So it was fun. It was a good time. We were very good at shows, like just the logistics of it. Uh, being easy to work with is really important. Um, which I mean, nope. like, don't piss off your sound guy. Don't piss off your sound guy. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> don't piss off your sound guy. Don't piss off your plumbing customer. Um, 
be easy to work with. You know, I think it's just, it's like a business, you know, Sim- very similar. Very similar. Okay. What are we going to talk about today? Man, we are going to talk about, well, you introduced me to this new term. It's called guerrilla marketing. Guerrilla um, marketing. Yeah. I like that term. I remember when I first heard it, I was like, Dude, what is that? It's a, like, it's a cool term. I like I it. I want to do some of this guerrilla marketing. How much guerrilla marketing did you do? I did a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, first, what is it? So guerrilla marketing is like, you know, guerrilla tactics to marketing, right? So like sure. mm-hmm. things that you're not necessarily going to pay somebody to go do, right? So it's mm-hmm. it's free. It's all like the paying is your, your effort and your time that you put mm-hmm. into it. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's like really low dollar cost, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. So anybody can do it. And it's it works and it's a really good way to just hmm. go get new business, right? It's not mm-hmm. scalable because it takes so much of your time. Right. So like for the guys who are just starting out, because I've been taking sales calls and mm-hmm. I've talked to quite a few people who are just starting out in their business and mm-hmm. which is super exciting. That's super rad. Um, a lot of them are pretty young and they're getting started. And I'm like, that's awesome, dude. You're starting way younger than me. Like if you can make this work, mm-hmm. that's going to be rad for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but so they, they've started a business and their biggest struggle is like, I don't know how to get work, but they don't have any money. Mm-hmm. And so the question becomes, sure. how do you do that? And the answer mm-hmm. is guerrilla marketing, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this extremely low dollar cost, really high effort, but still works really well. And things mm-hmm. you can go do that anybody mm-hmm. can do, right? And this mm-hmm. works for any business, just works well for plumbing as well. Sure. Yeah. So what is it? What, so what type of things that people have to do? Um, I'm going to talk about the some of the ones I've done, and then we'll go over some other ones. Yeah, so, gotcha. Like when I first started out in my plumbing business, mm-hmm. I started out, I had like bought tools on a credit card, um, didn't have any work. And first thing I did, I went on Facebook. I knew all of my mom, like my mom was on Facebook. My dad was on Facebook. And I knew that all of their Mm. friends were on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, those are the customers that I need to go work for because they own homes, they have jobs, they have money. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I went on Facebook and I added, like I became friends with all of my mom's friends, sent friend requests to all of my mom's friends, sent friend requests to all of my dad's friends, all of my aunt's friends, my uncle's friends, like sent out thousands of friend requests. And Facebook will limit how many you can do a day. Mm-hmm. If you just get on there every single day and just do your limit, right? And this is you personally, right? This isn't you like personally. your business. This is you personally. You personally, your personal yep. page, right? So if mm-hmm. you got a bunch of like stuff you don't want old people to see on your page, go through and delete it and make yeah. yourself look Smart like move. a good little, good little boy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then go, go make some posts like, hey, just started my plumbing business. Um, you know, looking for work. If anybody needs some work done, I'd love to help you out. Mm -hmm. You can reach me here at this phone number. Mm -hmm. And then all of your friends that you just added, they're all going to see it. And if you're really cool, you tag your mom in it or you tag Mm -hmm. your dad in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody who knows they're going to support you and like share your stuff and like be your best fan. Yep. Your mom's going to share it. That's literally how I got my first like two weeks to a month's worth of work. Yeah, that's just awesome. From doing that. And mm-hmm. so like, I think like week two, I landed like a pretty big boiler job. At the mm-hmm. time I thought, oh, I'm going to make a ton of money. This is rad, right? Yeah. But, yep. but I wasn't priced properly. <laughs> so I ended yeah. up not making any money on it. Yeah. But <laughs> regardless of that, <laughs> the marketing, uh-huh. work, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did get a job. Not. You did get a yeah. job. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in there, lesson two is price yourself, right? So when you do get work, you actually make money. Yeah, you're not just out there doing work for fun because fun yeah. doesn't fun doesn't feed your belly at the end of the day. Fun does not feed your belly at the end of the day. Mm-mm. Not at all. Mm-mm. So that's one that I did. That one worked very, very well. Mm-hmm. Um, second did you, one I did. Did you, continue, did you keep continue that? Like as you start to do these other marketing, did you continue so, to do Facebook and stuff? Yeah, there were times in my business where, where I had just hired a guy and I knew I didn't have enough work for him. And he was a good hire. So I just hired him. Right. And I was like, okay, I got it. Now I got to come up with work for this guy. Mm -hmm. And so 
I would call up my marketing company and be like, can we spend more here? Can we spend more here? Can we spend more here? Mm -hmm. And it'd be like, no, maybe we should do this other form of marketing. Like, let's add this in to what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. So I'd start a new form, but it would take like a month to kick off. Right here. I had this guy, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a, there were a couple of times like that. And once I exhausted like my parents, friends and my uncle's friends Mm -hmm. and my aunt's friends, I started going and you can actually go into Facebook and you can search like people you may know or something like that, or you can search Mm -hmm. people. And you can search mm-hmm. by location as well. Mm-hmm. And I just started adding as many random people in m- where my business was in mm-hmm. Fairbanks, Alaska mm-hmm. on Facebook. Right. We all remember this happening too. Yeah. <laughs> like all of us remember being like, yeah. well, because you went from not active on Facebook as a guy who's like, I wouldn't go on the internet to suddenly yeah. being like, I'm on the internet now. Everybody's my friend. Mm-hmm. Like It's funny because everybody in our, our community of friends noticed it. They're like, oh, yeah. see Jared's online. He's my friend now started posting regularly like hey mm-hmm. look at me i'm a good old boy yeah and we all made fun of you for it tons of friends right mm-hmm. i think i got up to like 2500 friends yeah and like all but maybe 50 of those were from not from fairbanks right yeah and i think sure. i probably went from like 50 friends when i first started to mm-hmm. 2500 so all people i don't even really know right Sure. Strictly um, with the with the idea that I can do work for these people. Yep. And so then mm-hmm. I would at that time I had a company page, Facebook page. And so then I would create a post on my Facebook page, mm-hmm. company Facebook mm-hmm. page. Mm-hmm. And then I would share it on my personal page. And then I would write at the top, like, hey guys, you know, I own this plumbing company. We just hired a new guy. We do exceptional work. If you guys need anything done, give us a call here. Yeah, sure. You know, and it worked. Mm-hmm. It would get work. People mm-hmm. would tell, oh, I saw you on Facebook. Or I saw the yeah. I saw it on the owner's Facebook or somebody shared your post. Yeah. Right? And that was me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Works well. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and that came from one of those times, like on our last podcast, we talked about the attitude of whatever it takes. Yeah, it sure. From one of those times where I was like, what am I going to do? I got to get work. Something. I got to do this. I just mm-hmm. go do something. Right. Can't do but nothing. Get creative. Go make something happen. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another one I did, I think the only other one I did, I think I've only done, no, I've done three of these. Another one I did is I took, I got business cards printed out. Mm-hmm. I think I did it with business cards and I got a little pamphlet made with my company logo and company name and phone number and just mm-hmm. like a brief description of what we did. Mm-hmm. And I went and put them on cars in a parking oh. lot. So go to mm-hmm. like, a big grocery store or a mall or whatever, and just mm-hmm. go start sticking those. I'd stick them either. If you could get them in the door handle, that's best. I think figure out how to get it to stay in the door handle because mm-hmm. they can't open their door without seeing it, mm-hmm. which forces them to like, at least touch it and move it and throw it on the mm-hmm. ground. <laughs> so at, least <laughs> see your, at least they see your logo, right? And yeah. Probably yeah. You can orient it so that they can see your colors and your logo. And, yeah. And that's like, I'm cool with that if that's all they did, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you might piss some people off, but whatever, who cares? Yeah. Anyway, I'd go hit like a whole parking lot. I'd go hit a mm-hmm. hundred cars, and then mm-hmm. next day go get a hit another hundred cars and just mm-hmm. keep going. Mm-hmm. And that all that led to work. Mm-hmm. I have I have also taken business cards and just left them. I've gone to coffee shops and just left. A stack mm, of right cards on a table. Yep. Just a few tables, stack some mm-hmm. business cards out and just leave them there. Right. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same idea of like getting a company pen and always yeah. signing with a new pen and then leaving the pen at the business. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cause they always need pens. So yep. then the next person comes and grabs your pen. It's like, Oh, You're like, Oh, what's, what's this? this pen? This is a neat pen. No, I, I like these guys. I'm going to hire them next time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dude. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, I think what really happens is, is they've seen your other advertising and then yes. they see the pen. And or then it links, the pen, connect. And then they see your other advertising and they connect it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, I saw their pen at the coffee shop. Yep. It just like makes this weird connection in people's brains where they're like, I'm going to call them next time. Yeah, no, it definitely helps because it's just like a different, they're experiencing your ad in a different medium. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this is a pen, matching it with the sticker, matching it with this. And then they're like, it it like 
hits the brain in different yeah. areas than just it's one. It's a real business. And yeah, right. You work in my community. That's yeah, it's a weird thing. It is kind of weird. It to- it totally works though. It's like kind of mm-hmm. the concept of like you got to tell people seven times before they remember something. Mm-hmm. It's that same kind of thing. They got to see you in seven places or at least mm-hmm. seven different times, right? Mm-hmm. And put those together, and then they won't remember you. Mm-hmm. And that is branding, like to its core. Mm-hmm. That's what branding is. Like people mm-hmm. seeing your colors and your logo in multiple mm-hmm. places. And that's how, like, in my opinion, that's how you win. That's how you beat everybody is brand. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you can be better branded, um, you win. End of story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's off topic though. So. Yeah. Come on. Bring it back together. The third one is Craigslist. Mm. Just go post on Craigslist. And this creates, I did this in the very beginning along with Facebook. Like mm-hmm. I think I did Facebook first and then I was like, okay, what else can I do? And I started just posting on Craigslist. Mm-hmm. And I think I would go on there every day and just create a new post. Mm-hmm. And I did this because I saw another one of my friends doing it with his construction company. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's all he did. I think that's it's just how Craigslist. Got, huh, funny. Yeah, I think that's how we got all of his work in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about Chase. Yep, um, I know. I already knew it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember him saying like, dude, it's free. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's free. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. something he would say. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so go on there. If you do it every day, like, because the way Craigslist work, you make a, like, I don't remember where I'd put it. There's like a, there's a section just for that. To I wonder, put in, you... to put in for Craigslist. It's like contractor for hire or something mm, like that. Sure, sure. And the way it works is you put your, your post in there and then, as people put more posts in, yours sinks further down the page, right? Yeah. Yep. So you got to refresh. You go in there like every single day and just put a new mm-hmm. post in. Mm-hmm. And it's if like you have a few words to say something that's going to get them to click on it. Mm-hmm. So you should try to think of something good, mm-hmm. like coolest plumbing company in town. And I would just change it up every day. Mm-hmm. Happiest plumbers in the interior. That's what mm-hmm. I used. Need mm-hmm. a plumber? We got you. Uh, Mm -hmm. plumbers available. Click here. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Something. Um, Mm -hmm. the problem with Craigslist is all the customers super cheap. Yep. They're on Craigslist. They're on Craigslist, (laughs) right? Yeah. (laughs) Super cheap customers. So you just got to know that going in. Like that's Mm -hmm. not something you want to do long term. It's Mm -mm. only in the beginning to just get some work and get some money coming in the door. So Mm -hmm. you, you will have to be willing to like, Go there, give them a quote. They're going to complain and just let them talk you down. Because mm-hmm. at the beginning, at the end of the day, money in your pocket is money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Especially when, like, if you don't have any more work to do. Sure, yeah. And and you're like, yeah, this is going to be 800 bucks. And they're like, holy, I, ch- I can't do that. Mm-hmm. All you mm-hmm. got to do is this thing, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to be like, all right, I don't have any more work. How about 500 bucks? I'll give mm-hmm. you 300 bucks off just because I like you and you're a cool mm-hmm. guy, right? Mm-hmm. They'll be like, okay. And so that yeah, sounds, that's a like good deal. Yeah. Or you can tell them, yeah, this is a really good deal. Anybody else mm-hmm. would charge you eight, right? Mm, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got to get comfortable talking to people too. Yeah. You got to, you got to practice. got to put the reps in. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I would, t- I would totally would talk to people just like I talk to you. Mm-hmm. Like if you can go into a house and be like, you're my best friend. Mm-hmm. We're just cool people. I'm mm-hmm. just here trying just to hang out. Work. I just got to make some money. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll, you'll sell work all day long. Yeah. Cause it's a lot, it's disarming. You're not there like, hello, I am the sales professional, you know, cause people sniff yeah. that out and they're like, what are you, you trying to sell es- me something right now? Especially those Craigslist guys. Cause they, yeah, cause they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're already in it for the deal, right? right? They're already in yeah. it for the deal. They don't want to talk nope. to no salesy thing at all. Nope. Not at all. Anyway, at the end of the day, if you take $800 job, you discount to five, 500 bucks, but it was the only call you had on the board. Sure. Well, if you walked away, you walked away from 800 bucks. If you do the job for 500 bucks, you get 500 bucks in your pocket and you only walked away right. from three. You're 500 yep. bucks ahead, right? Yep. 500 bucks closer to actually doing some proper marketing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I did that one quite a bit in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably only did it for like, three months 
And then I stopped. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's when I was able to like, I think just a, like a month in, it was like, okay, let's start investing in real marketing. Sure. At, at that point I'd made enough money to start investing into marketing. So. Yeah, sure. Actually putting money behind it. Do you have yeah. anything that you wouldn't do or you wouldn't recommend that is sort of like a common thing that people might think is a good idea? Yeah. Sit there and do nothing. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Don't do that. that. Jobs come to you. Yeah. That's Watch your happen. phone. <sighs> Nobody's calling. Yeah. 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 Um, no. Yeah. I don't cool. know. I think mm. like whatever you try would be cool. I mean, like if you're in a place with populated neighborhoods, I would mm -hmm. go door knock. I'd go order mm -hmm. some door hangers to so get those super cheap at any print shop. They'll probably, mm -hmm. they, they can make them for you as well. Put your logo on them and just have them say, someone sews plumbing company mm -hmm. needs some plumbing done 10 percent discount if you mention this door hanger mm -hmm. give us a call mm -hmm. and go knock on doors and if somebody answers the door just say like i would say i've never mm -hmm. knocked on doors so i don't know but i would say hey my name is jared i just started my plumbing company i was in the neighborhood sure. working on some stuff i was wondering if anybody else needs some work done you guys need mm -hmm. any plumbing work done mm-hmm and if they said, yeah, I'd be like, cool. You mind if I take a look at it and give you a quote? Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, yeah, that'd be rad, right? I didn't mm -hmm. even have to call a plumber. Maybe mm -hmm. they had this thing nagging them in the back of their head. Yeah. Um, and then you can, like, if they're like, no, you can say, are you sure? I'm getting everybody 10% off today, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might as well try. You got them there. You're in front of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then say, no, say, hey, well, keep this door hanger anyway. If you need something next time, I'll still honor the 10% off. Yeah. Have a yep. good one, right? Yep. Easy mm -hmm. combo to have. Mm -hmm. And they, the, like those people will call you. If you put out a hundred door hangers, you'll get a few calls from that. Guaranteed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then if you go knock on a door and nobody answers, just leave the door hanger on the door mm -hmm. handle mm -hmm. and go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. And it really but doesn't it's doing take that something. Long. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. doing something. Like you will get work from that. It'll work. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how, like how many doors you knock on is how much work you're going to get. And especially if you're not doing anything else, that yep. is a high leverage activity because that is tied directly yep. to your income. And so that's yep. like, like there's other things that you could be doing as the business owner in that moment, but that yep. is a high leverage activity because yeah, it's that something point, that will make you money. Yeah. At that point you need money and you don't have yes. marketing going. So the only way to make money is for you to Gorilla go do something. Guerrilla mm -hmm. marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found this guy on Instagram the other day that was doing, um, see, he had a window washing company. It was just him. Mm -hmm. And he would go knock on doors and he had the the best line ever. Mm -hmm. He would go knock on a door. The person would come to the door and he would say, Hey, have you seen the guys in the, he had a red polo on with his company logo on it. And he would go, mm -hmm. have you seen the guys in their red shirts down the, down the road, washing windows, looking real good. And the, <laughs> the homeowner would be like, <laughs> would be like, what? He goes, yeah, we, we've been in the neighborhood all day. You know, a couple guys, just good looking dudes washing windows. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was just going around to the neighbors and and seeing if you guys would mind if um what do we say see see if you guys would mind if i give you a free quote to get your windows clean do you mind it only take me 20 seconds right mm -hmm. and so they always mm -hmm. say yeah he goes okay i'm just gonna run around your house real quick and come back and mm -hmm. he would just literally run around the entire house uh -huh. he would usually try to find something to compliment him on like man your grass back there looks really good I'm like, dude that's yeah. a sweet pool back there yeah and so he'd come back he'd compliment him and then he's like okay i'll tell you what Normally it's three forty nine to get all your windows washed and cleaned and wiped down, but since we're already in the neighborhood and we don't have to do any traveling, I'll give it to you for your hundred bucks off. How does two forty nine sound? All of your windows mm -hmm. cleaned, mm -hmm. dude. And so many people were like, hundred bucks off, two forty nine. All my windows, yeah, sweet. Literally, like that thing that I'm never gonna do, huh? Yeah, literally twenty minutes later, you'd have all their windows cleaned, right? Yeah. And the funny part about that is like, he used the same pricing no matter what house it was. It didn't, it didn't matter. Yeah. And so he'd literally go to a neighborhood and do like eight houses a day. Yeah. And he's making a couple grand a day. Yeah. And it's just him. Yeah. And all he has is a squeegee and yeah. he doesn't use a ladder or anything. He just mm -hmm. uses a couple like painter poles with squeegees mm -hmm. and then some mm -hmm. um, like weird, like dry towel things, right? To mm -hmm. go clean it. That's it. Takes hmm. him 20 minutes. Hmm. Maybe it takes him 30 sometimes. But it's like, it was cool. Yeah. So you can do He's stuff just, like that. Like mm -hmm. if you could come up with like something that somebody needs like that, mm -hmm. and go around and do that. 
perfect. I think that in that scenario, it seems like what did him so well is he was just good with the customer. Oh yeah, totally. And I think that is like, don't nobody don't ever discount that skill as being good with the customer. Yep. So while you're guerrilla marketing and you yep. have those face to faces, especially if you're just starting off, like especially if you're coming from like commercial plumbing or something like this, where you don't have that customer interface, yep. that time is so valuable because then you can really learn what it's like. So that then when you do hire guys, you know exactly what it is like. You're like, dude, I door knocked for six months. I've talked to hundreds of people. This is how I have found myself to be able to sell this work and sell these jobs. Yep. And then you can just really have a strong foundation. Yep. So one guy that I think you told him to go door knock, he needed some work, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't have any money. And you're like, dude, yep. go try door knocking. He went yeah, and knocked on some door hangers. Doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he put uh, yard signs at the beginning of all the neighborhoods. I thought that was oh, a nice, nice touch, right? Yep. So you drive it into a neighborhood, you see the sign, and then mm -hmm. you see the thing on your door hanger. So you got two touch points mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. you get 10% off. It'll probably work. <laughs> Yeah. What was that? That was four? I think so. Four. Maybe the door knocking was four. Social media, four, Craigslist, five. door knocking, and door hangers. Door hangers. What else did we do? Um, cards or flyers on. Yeah, on yeah. Business cards. Yep, yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think probably, like, out of all of those, the social media ones are really easy. You can yeah, do you that. don't have to leave your house for that. Yeah, and you like Facebook. Facebook is going to limit how many people you can add, so you could probably do that in like twenty minutes a day, right? So mm -hmm. you might as well do that every day. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think probably door knocking is going to be more effective than putting stuff on cars, right? But I would say if you're not super good at being friendly, like right up <laughs> mm -hmm. front, because you're getting yourself in a situation where like. Most yeah, people sure. want you to knock on their door. It's not like they called mm -hmm. you to their house. Okay. So it's a little mm -hmm. different than running a service call. Mm -hmm. But if you're, so if you're not like on it, like, Hey, what's up, man? I was in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. My name's so-and-so. I started a plumbing mm -hmm. company and really friendly mm -hmm. to the customer. If you can't do that, then I would do, go do, go do the stuff on the cars. But if you can't pull mm -hmm. that off, I think it'd be more effective. For sure. Yeah, because it it can have the double edged sword where people could be like that guy. That guy was weird. Like, yeah. what is he? I'm gonna go tell my neighbor. Watch out for the weird, creepy dude knocking on doors. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, so, and then I think like Craigslist is probably super effective, but the downside is the customer is yep is good. So you're gonna have yep. to be prepared to lower your your prices. Yep, yep. I think but, probably out of all of those, like Facebook is gonna get you the best customer who's probably willing to pay you more than they are another plumber just because mm -hmm. they are associated to you. Like if you're adding all mm -hmm. of your mom's friends, mm -hmm. you can pull that into the conversation. Like they call you and you're like, you get to their house and you're like, Oh, Hey, do you know my mom? You, your name seems familiar. Do you know my mom? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. what's her name? So-and-so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I know your mom. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. So funny mm -hmm. how that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's so oh, funny. Wow. how this all right. just worked like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Man, thanks for calling. Appreciate that. Okay, mm -hmm. this is going to be 10 grand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, it's fine. Be, it's just normal. You know, it's all good. They're going to be more willing to pay you than, yeah, they are sure. The person they know. Money. Yeah. Yep. The person they know and they're associated with. Yep. Yeah. Cause as I think they feel like they know you, they like you, and they trust you. Yep. And that's what you're going for. Yep. And I think the biggest, I mean, the biggest position of this conversation is there's things to do that you can do to get work. Like, oh, yeah. Don't just sit there and do nothing or don't just sit there and wait till you have enough money to do something like go out yep. there and there are, do these things. And then you can get the money to eventually pay for marketing. So you don't have to do those things anymore. Yeah. Yep. And then as soon as mm -hmm. you got some money going, go get a coach. Yeah. Go get a coach, figure out what kind of marketing you need to be doing, figure out how to price yourself properly, mm -hmm. figure out all the business side of stuff. So you can really mm -hmm. like, if you just put away a little bit of money and then go get a coach, like if you had, if you had mm. 10 grand in the bank and then you went and found somebody to mentor you, which we do, by the way, you can click the link down below. If you're watching YouTube, if you're on the podcast, go to YouTube and click the link. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's wealthyplumber.com slash for, so it's forward slash mm -hmm. coaching with Jared and it's mm -hmm. J E R E D J 
Jared, yep. coaching with Jared. It'll be mm-hmm. it's an awesome program. Best program ever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you can, if you can like start a plumbing company and you can go do that guerrilla marketing and you can go put some cash away and you can start doing some work, you have something in you that most yeah. people don't have. Yeah. hundred right? percent. Most mm-hmm. people will not do any of those things. Mm-hmm. Like you are already like mm-hmm. a step above everybody else. Mm-hmm. If you get coaching and you learn how to run your plumbing business, you're going to kill it just because mm-hmm. of your attitude. Like you already mm-hmm. have the right attitude to have a good business. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Cool, man. Cool, man. I, I understand. Marketing. Guerrilla marketing. Got it. I'm going to go knock on some doors for something. I'll figure it out on the way there. <laughs> Dude, I want to try it. <laughs> Dude, we'll do it. Okay. In your neighborhood. Okay. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Later, Jared. Home.